you ever head out on a hunt and you just got that good feeling? You know the one where you're quietly confident that something's going to happen, but you don't say diddly squat just in case you jinx it? Well, that's this mission. So leading up to this hunt, mine and Toby's luck in the public land had been quite variable, mainly due to running into a ton of other hunters. And this meant more pressure on the animals and less for us to see. So putting that bad juju behind us, it was now time to focus on our new mission. And as we hit the unsealed road, well what do you know, our first good luck omen popped up. Two spikers. I think we should run, cuz. Yeah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Get off the road, you dick. What that one was, uh. <laughs> Muppet 1 and Muppet 2. <laughs> For that morning's entertainment, it was time to head up to the car park. The empty car park. So feeling pretty chuffed about being the first ones at the car park, we happily plodded along getting our gear ready. And then next minute, you guessed it, a car pulled up. Hey man, let's go. Nice, uh, nice weather for it in the end day. Eh? Oh yeah, bro, fuck hard, eh? <laughs> Whereabouts are you fellas going? We'll go up this way. Oh sweet. Yeah. Okay. Are you Thane? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I um, I stay with Armand Struve. I stay at his house. Oh, Armand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, how are you going, bro? Yeah. You're good. I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> Don't listen to any of it, that's all bullshit. <laughs> but it is true. <laughs> oh, where are you going? Huh. So obviously, the next part of this conversation is all secret squirrel stuff. And, as you may have heard, this young hunter, his name being Marian, is a friend of a friend. Look into that basin there, yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to disturb you if I go up that track, up the face on the ridge line. Nah, no, bro, nah, 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 you're right, yeah, yeah, you'll be all good, yeah, yeah. Okay, nah, no, sweet ears. Sweet ears, man. Oh, well, um, I'm glad I finally met you, because I uh, heard a lot about you, but, uh... <laughs> oh, okay, nah, yeah. sweet ears. Yeah, well, good luck. Yeah, good luck for you, man. Uh, Cheers. Cheers. And that is an example of how we normally interact with other hunters, either in the car park or on the hill. Most hunters are bloody good buggers. And with our gear squared away, it was time to hit the track. So after a reasonable one hour walking, we arrived at our shooting blind. Let's pack off, get some warm gears on, get our gear squared away and battle prep for the morning. How's that for a um, sunrise, eh? Pretty mean. Um, you make a time getting up here about an hour. Um, yeah, this is a virgin spot for us, so we'll uh, Go sit down there patiently, wait in the dark, see if we can't spot us a deer. Stand point. As the darkness gave way to a beautiful sunrise, Toby and I sat quietly in the dark, waiting for an opportunity to glass the faces in front of us. And as the light slowly illuminated the hillside, we strained our eyes through our binos for anything that resembled a deer. With the way our luck had been running this morning, it wasn't too long before we picked up our first target of the morning. This stag at 545 meters. Not wanting to look a gift horse in the mouth, Toby and I both decided that if this stag hung around long enough to present a shot, we were going to take him. Stand by. Um, 
take it. Yep. You ready? Yeah. One, two. Hey. That's us. Uh, Stag down. <laughs> There's my boat. Um, yeah, it happened real quick. I uh, didn't really got a lot of get a lot of footage to be fair because uh, I picked them up pretty quick. Yeah, real quick. Uh, geez, the cameras, man, trying to get on with the cameras, and then um, Toby was on, I was fucking around with the cameras. And then I should have just given Toby the green light, but anyhow, so that's pretty cool. We've got to say um young stag. Young stag and an extraction plan. Yeah. Military tricks. We used to use the old get the old piece of grass for the for uh, identifying location on map, but basically uh, there's that gap there the Stag's actually just down in here somewhere. Well, that was worth it. That was definitely worth it. With the venue down and the pressure off, it was time for a cup of tea, a snack, and to think about our recovery plan. Yeah, in our case, we've, we've just bumped into a couple of old timers. Ourselves actually come up behind us. G'day, boys! Fucking hell! <laughs> um, yeah, it was really good yarning to them, and we sort of told them where our deer was. And where the other young fella this morning had gone right up and sort of trying to. We knew where he was hunting because he's hunting right up there by the three nipples. So we just sort of said to him, oh, well, if yeah, he's here, you guys are more than welcome to hunt up in there, you know. So, yeah, like I said, the old school hunters, no suppressors. Hey. Hand over the top of the barrel of the rifle. Oh, come on, uncle. <laughs> but anyway, it's really good when you bump into hunters. Oh, and we're pretty, pretty good up here, eh? Mm. Oh, we've bumped into nothing but yeah, good buggers. Yeah, yeah, some yeah, real no. good buggers, man. Well, enough jibber jibber. Time to get the recovery underway. Starting with stripping down our modulus pack, and secondly, setting the sight and go on my Garmin Delta Tactics watch. I'm really enjoying this function on the watch as it's a really good backup to my already deadly navigation skills. Our plan is to go down this little ridge here, up that sidle track, get onto the top of that ridge there and then come down straight on top of the stag which should be somewhere in there. Sounds real simple, I got the feeling it. Not going to be that simple, but <coughs> we have both relieved ourselves of uh, packages that no need to be in our bodies. Um, feeling a bit lighter. Uh, anyway, let's get our recovery on. Ooh, quick assessment up there. Shot up there, and we reckon our mates right in there somewhere on that face using that pine tree. If you can see that pine tree up there, lone top pine tree as a reference point um, to hook right and follow that ridge line down. So that's uh, you know all the different sort of techniques and skills you use to um, to navigate <coughs> over to the animal. Yeah, obviously I got the. Um, I'll get the sight and go too, but what you find is I'm going to end up getting behind the animal, but that compass bearing will still work well as a back bearing, even though I'm going to be behind it, it'll still give me an angle back, back to where the line of sight from where I took the sight and go down to where the animal is, so yeah, use kind of everything you can to give you that advantage to help you find the animal, because obviously you guys have watched my videos before, you know, uh, it's not always guts and glory and finding the animal, the animal drops dead, you know, sometimes it's just, oh, I don't know, you can't find it because you mishit it. 
we just can't find it. So we've um, we've punched off the main ridgeline track. That's where we shot from. We've just taken a couple of arrangers back to the shooting blind. It was 5.50, so we're on around about, because it was 5.30, we're on around about sort of the right um, mm. height or sidle on the side of this uh, ridge. We've dropped off to the right-hand side of the ridge, so we just need to find a couple more reference points. Check our photos on our phones for referencing. You know, look at big, prominent, trees like this um, to get our bearings yeah damn boy next video dead deer yep, there we go i'm i'm telling you we just were only yeah i stopped by that tree there walked down and found them yeah that's just fantastic tracking skills or good luck but anyway um let's get into some butchering here So our, our butchering plan, obviously Toby's hooking into doing the, we, we generally do the back stakes first, um, back legs, the front legs, um, with this plan here we've got all our argali bags ready to take our meat, so um, we're going to use our good old famous um, prussic loops here, and then take them up to the tree, and then bone them out, hang them and bone them out, like I've done a few times on my videos before, so this is my uh, first time on a deer using my brand new helium from uh, the hearty brother Hubie from uh, RNM Blades. The last time I, well, the first time I used it was actually on a cow. Can help. Just enough gas bagging, better get to help the bro out. Oh, by the way, if you're patient enough and wait to the end of this video, after the outro, you might just see me cook this back leg up. Alrighty, with all the boning out done, I had the two back legs, Toby had the front shoulders, back steaks, heart and liver. It was time to get it on the pack, get some go-go juice into us, one more final inspection of the deer and get ready for our walkout. It was just the final thank you to the old mate there. Um, just a quick look at the shots. The two shots, man, they went too far apart on the entry side. So one popped through the top of here and just destroyed the um, just the base of the spine. And the other one popped through the top there, hit the bottom of the lungs. So both lungs here. Clip pretty good lungs. shooting, bro. Uh, well, Up and out. Up we go. Back to the shooting blind. We'll grab the rest of our kit. Make our way back to the car. I know you've heard me talk about this functionality before, but I really do enjoy the ability to get back to the main pack, strap it on, have the meat completely separate, get my main pack squared away, and get ready for the walkout. And with that all squared away, it's time for that last little push back down to the car. Yeah, good mission, eh? Yeah, you're good right mission. Cool. Mm. Um, good outcome. Uh, first time on that blind. Mm. Soon as daylight come around, 
money. Your thoughts, bro? Yeah, good fun. Yeah. Good fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that one. Uh, Plenty of potential, eh? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't got much to really add other than good shooting. Good good couple of shots there. Double team on the secure the Vinny. Um, got most of the stag in the back, so. Mm. Other than that, um, fuck yeah. Thanks for coming along, bro. Another yeah. mission. Mm. Another one stitched up. Um, you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. So what do you think about that stag being shot and that burning out session I did up in the bush? Well, what I'm going to do today is take about 800 grams of that shank meat and take you through my process for doing a slow cook. Well the ingredients are pretty simple. 800 grams of any, some beef stock, a thickening agent, I'm using devil sausages mix, you could use packet gravy, your favourite meat seasoning, a couple of old onions and some flour. Alrighty, let's get into it. Start by cutting your vinny up into reasonable sized chunks. Dice up your onions while you're in the slicing mode. Next we get a plate of flour. We douse it with our favourite meat seasoning. Put the combined seasoned flour and the meat into a bowl and give it a good old shake up so it gets covered nicely. Crank up the frying pan, cooking all into the wok. As you can see I've already done some onions. Let the pan get up to a good heat. And in goes the venny. Get these nice and seared up. Then once you've done that, get all the meat and the onions back into the wok. Add this stuff, the good old balsamic vinegar. Give it a little toss toss for a couple of minutes. Then over to the slow cooker. In goes our beef stock, kind of just enough to cover it. Oh man, that looks good enough to eat now. So that's it. Close that bad boy up. Set them on low, and um, but I'm going to leave that for about three, four hours. Got a few jobs to do, so come back, see how it's progressing, and then maybe um, look to chuck an L devil sausages mix, and that'll just help mature the flavour and thicken it up a little. A couple more hours after that, and mashed potatoes, multibini, scoffs on. Mmm, she's been simmering away for a hearty three hours. Now it's time to put in the devil sausages mix. Close it back up. 20 past four. Let's have a look. Oh ho 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 ho, look at that. Malto beanie. Look, get some spuds chopped up, mashed up, plated. Stand by. Alrighty, so she's been a few hours now. And it's the moment of truth. Right, moment of truth. There's no moment of truth because I already know. But uh, that is just look falling to bits. Here we go. As long as I don't burn the lips. Oh, I get confused between the texture of the. Potatoes and uh, venison. Mm. Anyway, that there was a stag running around the hills yesterday. Now it's in my belly. If this is a bit of you, give it a nudge. It's not hard. Don't have to be a rocket scientist, just a bush cook. Mm.